Yes. Okay, so maybe we should begin. Uh, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Leo Ratajkowski. I'm a professor here in the physics department. Uh, and it's my great pleasure to welcome you to Boulder uh, and to Boulder Summer School. Uh, the summer school is real, but the uh, visit to Boulder is somewhat virtual. Uh, I sort of uh, put some slides here to show you what you're missing and, and not to frustrate you, but to perhaps uh, entice you to come visit Boulder at another time and to apply to another school uh, where you we can have it in person. And uh, of, of course, we all regret uh, not being able to have it in person, but such is life. And uh, hopefully uh, there'll be many more opportunities to come and uh, to visit Boulder and to be here in person. Uh, so this year is a school on uh, ultra cold matter, and uh, we will have more to say about that. And it's beautifully represented by this uh, image here uh, by a, a few representative uh, examples of uh, just outstanding work that's going on in the subject, uh, and you will hear a lot about it. But before we get into the scientific program, besides welcoming you, I wanted to give you, uh, particularly this, the students and the first uh, timers, uh, some background on the school. Uh, so Boulder School was founded uh, in 2000 by uh, uh, well, the, the, the main idea was conceived by Steve Gervin, and then uh, we joined him with Matthew Fisher, Andy Millis, and myself uh, in this endeavor and uh, obtained NSF funding, and uh, the rest is history. We've run uh, schools on a right, large variety of topics, and you can see those uh, on our website. Uh, sometime, maybe 10 years back, Andy sort of stepped away a little bit. Uh, uh, and uh, Christina Marchetti, who is a professor, very distinguished professor in uh, soft condensed matter physics and biophysics at UCSB, uh, has stepped in and has been uh, helping us run the school. And uh, we're, of course, are grateful. It takes a lo lots of money, particularly on the sort of a, the standard year for the school when we bring in a lot of students and faculty and housing them and feeding them uh, to our campus, to University of Colorado campus. It takes a lot of funding and that's been uh, NSF DMR uh, and particularly Daryl Hess in the last uh, maybe 15 years uh, has been extremely supportive and the school would not be possible without his, uh, you know, unwavering support over all these years. And, you know, as I say here, there's been really a huge variety of schools ranging from superconductivity to biophysics. It's really uh, very broad, our reach is very broad and, uh, and there's a lot of uh, fantastic lecture notes and videos on any topic uh, under the general umbrella of material science and condensed matter physics. So I strongly encourage you to browse around. It's an enormous research, uh, resource for students and faculty alike and uh, uh, we hope you take advantage of it. Um, but so, but this year is, as I mentioned, the school on ultra cold matter. Uh, I I've kind of marvel how over the years, you know, field of atomic physics uh, and condensed matter physics has, you know, the boundaries between those fields have really blurred, and it's really has become one could say uh, condensed matter physics with ultra cold matter. Uh, is uh, one way to think of it, uh, how I think of it. Uh, really collective phenomena, highly coherent and even in strongly interacting phenomena, if you include things like feshbach resonances and other related, uh, you know, optical lattices and many th things like this that you will hear about. Of course, the program would not be possible without really hard work of a fantastic group that's uh, uh, imaged here. Uh, Caden Hazard, uh, Ian Spillman, and Anna Maria Ray have been working uh, day and night, uh, really starting uh, more than a year ago to, well, a, a lot more than a year ago, putting in the proposal and uh, uh, conceiving the, the whole uh, program. And then we would, you know, we had to punt on it last year. Uh, and uh, 
so this year we're still having it by Zoom, as, you, as I said, but uh, really, we I do anticipate a fantastic program that we put together for you, and I hope you will enjoy it. Uh, uh, but, you know, as important as the uh, organization is and as the lectures are, really what makes the program in my 20 year, this is our 21st year experience at running the school, what really makes the program is, uh, is you know, it's kind of the second component, the most important component of the school is the students, the participants. So without your sort of fully embracing and, you know, diving, uh, both feet first into the program and really, you know, uh, being engaged, asking questions, not letting anything go by and really embracing it, it's not going to be a success. So really the success of the school is extremely reliant on all the participants, all the students and uh, uh, really, really taking to heart and really participating. So there are many other ways, of course, you know, the most important way to participate is to ask questions. Don't let, you know, this is not supposed to be a conference or a highbrow workshop. It's supposed to be a classroom-like environment, the kind that you see when you take your quantum class or your statistical mechanics class, where things should be developed from, uh, from the very beginning. And, you know, we even asked the lecturers to do that. And, you know, there are, they will succeed to the to various level of extent, but uh, it's really up to you, to the students, to you know, to to make sure that they that they cover things clearly. And if something is not clear, it, it do not ever think that it's somehow uh, uh, unclear to you, but clear to everybody else. And you have some dumb question, and you you don't want to interrupt. The, the, the idea is that it's really up. Uh, if you are not understanding something, it means your classmates are probably, it, it means it's not, has not been presented quite clearly and it's time to ask a question to pause. And, and you know, I'll, I'll have more to say about that. But in addition to the uh, sort of standard participation in the lecture, you know, I, we strongly encourage you to organize student seminars, discussions and tutorials. Uh, there's a gather town uh, platform that is made available to you that we've uh, we've made available to you for the month and you will be able to use it uh, to to do these other activities uh, on your own we will not uh, as as organizers we will not monitor them and we'll leave it to you to to do these extra activities um, and we're here to help you if you need to if you need anything with the organization. Of course, one, one uh, official part of the sort of uh, beyond lecture activity is the poster session. And many of you have submitted, most of you have submitted uh, posters for this, uh, for the poster session. And it will be run through GatherTown. And it's, a, it's gonna be in the first three weeks of the Boulder Summer School on Wednesdays. And it will be preceded by little advertisement, one minute advertisement for the for the one third of the group that's presenting the posters of that week, uh, as you can really see on the schedule. So also please, you know, we encourage you to discuss with your classmates and lecturers in the question and answer session, but also through these gather town uh, activities. And in addition, there's a Discord uh, thread has been set up for you, channels have been set up for you. And so we encourage you to use that to for a more fluid interaction. Um, just a little bit about Zoom question and answer protocol, I, although I'm sure, you know, after a year and a half of uh, uh, being at it, most of you are experts on it, but just to get things, uh, everybody on the same page. So all participants, are again, encouraged to ask questions, particularly clarifying ones. Uh, and don't wait till the end. If it's a clarifying question, ask it early. OK, I, I, I sometimes am guilty of it myself. I wait too long and then at some point I either forget the question or I feel that maybe uh, I don't understand enough to even ask a question. So I try to ask. So I work hard myself to ask questions early. Uh, in terms of the protocol during a lecture, ask a question by raising your hand uh, from the reaction tool uh, just at the bottom of the Zoom. Uh, and then uh, make sure when once you've asked the question, please lower your hand so we know that you know that question has been uh, 
dealt with and then mute your microphone. It's nice, you know, if you have decent uh, Wi-Fi connection, it's nice to also have your camera on, particularly when you're asking a question. So just everybody can, you know, meet you and the lecturer knows uh, who to respond to. It's a, as you know, as I'm sure most of you have given Zoom talks, it's a little bit unnerving speaking to just a screen with no cameras on. Um, also, uh, you know, feel free to ask questions in the chat. That's also a wonderful way. It's a little bit, uh, you know, it, it interrupts the lecture less. And also it gives the opportunity to other participants or other lecturers to maybe answer a question in the background and weigh in. And so it's, it kind of gives a, a little bit of a background, you know, a, a discussion of sorts in the background. And that also gets recorded. So then it's, uh, it's a very nice thing to, to utilize. Uh, if you have a highly technical question uh, or the discussion gets a bit too technical, then, you know, it's uh, not to interrupt the flow of the lecture. Uh, you know, we suggest that leaving the highly technical questions for after lecture question and answer period discussions in, uh, in, in Discord. But, you know, again, I don't want, you know, the last item to conflict with the, uh, with the first item. So it's, it's, if you have any doubt, it's better to first ask the question and it, leave it up to us, the organizers and the, uh, uh, the chairs of the, of the session to decide whether, you know, the, the question and answer has gotten into too technical of a territory. And then we will do our job to cut it off if we have to and postpone it towards a discussion session. So again, please do not let the last item, you know, give you any hesitation of asking a question. Okay. So uh, with that, I want to turn it over to Caden to give you the, our vision of the scientific program that we've put together for the next four weeks. Uh, so Caden, please take it away. Uh, yeah, Leo, can I share my screen? I realized I need to switch some of these topics. Yeah. Around. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop sharing and uh, so you can have control. Uh, also, I think I'm not a host. I probably logged in with the wrong email. So uh, Let's see. Oh, you can't even share, right? Uh, right yeah. Let me try to see if I can fix that. I can now. Yep, thank you. Okay, good. Okay, so uh, let's see. You can see my screen? Yep. Great. So uh, welcome, everybody. Really excited to have you here and get this kicked off. Um, I uh, won't uh, say too much about the scientific program. I'll just try to give you a quick overview of what we're trying to accomplish and some of the things uh, we're doing here. So the, the schedule um, is uh, available online. We'll talk about that in a little bit more. Uh, the big themes we're gonna cover here are roughly organized by week, but as Leo mentioned in the beginning, this field of, uh, of cold atoms and ultra cold matter more generally have really exploded to be so diverse that it's, um, that many of the overarching themes are experimental or uh, based on experimental techniques. And so we're actually able to explore lots of different types of physics in these systems. And I think that's reflected in the various uh, topics you see here. So the first week is going to be focusing a lot on interacting Bose and Fermi gases, uh, both in just traps and as well as loaded into lattices. Uh, these include resonant Fermi gases and BC, BCS phenomena. Um, the second week is going to be our first uh, step into non-equilibrium dynamics. It won't be the last, but we'll look at non-equilibrium dynamics and when you don't have dynamics, localization, as well as uh, topology and quantum computing and magnetism. Um, then uh, week three, we'll start to see some of the fantastic tools that have been developed in quantum gas microscopes uh, used to control an image at a single particle level, uh, many body quantum systems, as well as uh, quantum optics and information and synthetic matter, either synthetic gauge fields or um, synthetic dimensions. And uh, finally, in week four, we will see uh, gauge fields and the strong correlations that emerge in low dimensional systems, ultra cold chemistry with molecules and uh, how to interface ultra cold matter with light. And so in particular, cavity QED. And so hopefully the connections between these things uh, become clearer, uh, but uh, I think it's uh, clearly an exciting slate of topics that we're gonna be talking about. 
Um, so I just wanted to comment on the overall schedule. So the schedule, we go from 9 to 3.30 every day uh, in Mountain Standard Time or Mountain Time uh, with a couple exceptions. So there will be some seminars or public lectures in the uh, after this. So in particular this week, we're really excited to have Wolfgang Ketterly giving the public lecture. And then we'll have seminars in the following weeks by Chris Monroe and by myself and Ana Asenio Garcia. Uh, also this week, there's a special time for some of the lectures. This is the only week. Uh, so Mira Par Parish will be lecturing at four uh, mountain time. And uh, that's to accommodate the Australian time zone. And hopefully that's not uh, too much of out of step with everything else. So every day we're gonna have three lectures. These uh, three lectures will be split by breaks. The lectures are an hour and a half and split by breaks. We'll have a coffee break and we will have a lunch break. Um, and I encourage you, of course, take your breaks, but these breaks are also an opportunity to stay around on the Zoom or in some cases we'll go to Gather Town and to discuss with the lecturers or the organizers or your fellow students or all of the above, um, the things that we're hearing about, right? So it's just like in a real conference, you can gather over a coffee and uh, we hope you do the same thing here. And there will be uh, several mechanisms as we've heard about for doing this. So there will be uh, uh, these sort of Zoom links in the Discord and also the Gather Town for a poster, which uh, will give us lots of ways to communicate with each other and hopefully replicate as best as we can the real in-person uh, experience. So um, the, and I can, I just want to emphasize, so Leo already said this, but I really want to emphasize that we are counting on everybody um, to try to replicate this experience, right? So the, uh, the sort of informal discussions are just as important as the lectures here, I think. And so the lectures are the backbone on which the rest is built, but we have to do our part in, in making the rest happen. So um, Let's see, what else should we discuss before we get things uh, kicked off? Um, oh, each week there's going to be, uh, in addition to the poster sessions, which I'll talk about momentarily, there's going to be an overview of the topic. So you'll see on Friday um, each week, there's uh, uh, this chance for us to talk about what did we learn that week, right? So to just sort of summarize the different lectures we heard, uh, what did we learn? And then with the benefit of hindsight, to ask more questions about these topics, right? So at the in the heat of the lecture, you know, things can get sort of uh, dense and you, we might get a little lost, but then on the Fridays, we can take the chance to revisit it and um, ask our questions again. So, and that's also a good opportunity to have discussion that leads into lunch. Um, the poster sessions, of course, I think uh, most of you are uh, going to be presenting posters. The poster sessions will be uh, using GatherTown, which some of you, whoops, some of you have used. Oh, excuse me. And uh, the um, uh, there will be three of these, and they're indicated on the schedules. They're during our lunch break. They would normally be in the evening, but we'll be doing them over lunch to uh, make sure things don't go too late for people in other time zones. Importantly, there are going to be one minute advertisements for your poster. So uh, this should just be one slide that you're presenting and you have 60 seconds and we really can't go over because we don't have much time. Uh, so this will be a sort of way to motivate people to come to your poster. Right, and so that's uh, really all you're trying to give. You don't need to summarize the topic, just give us enough of a taste that we wanna come hear more. Um, and I think that's uh, really it for me. Do the other organizers want to add anything to this? The introduction today, perhaps just mention briefly. Yeah, so um, today during, uh, let me pull up the schedule here, during lunch, uh, that we're going to have participant introductions where we're all going to get a chance to introduce ourselves and uh, uh, to basically just say, you know, who you are, any interesting facts about you, what your research interests are, um, and uh, we'll go around and anyone who's around can, can say this. Yeah. And that'll be uh, just uh, stay on the Zoom after Brove, uh, Antoine Brove's talk. <laughs> 